And now the exciting conclusion. We're going to basically make this into a program. Right now, I would say this is a script. And even as a script, I've tried to retain some sense of input processing and output. But now uh, uh, this is obviously ridiculous, right? So there's a couple things we uh, want to think, think about. By the way, I'm going to move over top of that formula. We don't need to see that anymore. We're, we're done. We're, we kind of understand the formula enough to basically get it to work here. So a couple things. First of all, I don't like the fact that we've got 12 and 12. Uh, if I want to now, uh, let's say I want to pay this loan off bi-weekly, right? Uh, I'd have to go into the code and edit 12 uh, and make it, um, um, you know, 26, or if I paid bi-monthly 24. So, uh, so that's going to have to be altered a bit. Also, I don't want to sit there and have to constantly edit my code every time I change percentages and things like that. I don't want to do that either. So this is going to have to become a much more robust input section. I'm actually satisfied with with the uh, with the processing, except I may alter it depending on what I do with this. And then, of course, the prints. It'd be nice to add those formats in there. All right. So let's talk about how to basically make this thing into a uh, into a program now. So first thing, let's remind ourselves what we're doing. This is an input. And this is processing. Uh, processing thing and then this is output good deal now one thing i could do is let's do the stuff that's actually relatively uh, easy i have actually grown to like the uh, format uh, function so i'm going to uh just uh, uh do this i'm going to go flip payment and uh and i'm going to put a little f here so i'm actually going to work on the easy stuff first so i'm going to go ff and I'm going to go space, put a little parentheses there. Notice I'm leaving the variable still in their spot. And actually, this one I'm going to have to deal with a bit later. I'm going to deal with that a bit later. In fact, actually, even this one I'm going to have to deal with a little bit later. I don't like processing in at this level of your coding. I don't like processing in the middle of the output. So as soon as I start to see processing there, that really should be done in the processing section. This certainly should be done in the processing section. It really helps with debugging in, in your beginning. So I tell you what, you know what, let's, uh, let's back out, let's back out here because I'm probably gonna have to make myself another variable. All right, and we know this is flip payment and we kind of know now that what we can do is add, I think comma period to F and what that'll do is that'll make uh, this thing into uh, into uh, into a, a, a two decimal floating point thing. And uh, yeah, it did right there, right? It did right there. So that's awesome. I can slap a dollar sign in front of that if I want to, let's just do that. And then I don't need to now verify what it looks like so I can, or what it was, so I can get rid of that. All right, so that's one print statement done. I can get in there and be happy. Grant, you're saying, hey, you don't like these calculations happening there? No, I don't. I don't like these calculations happening here. This is the total cost. I'd much rather have a variable called flip total cost, total cost, oh my goodness, is assigned, have this calculation there, have this variable there, and that way it becomes very pure, right? And so now I got flit total cost, let's run it again and make sure this thing's gonna work. We kind of, you know, you, you get used to what the numbers are that you're seeing. So that's about, that's the right number. Awesome. Let's do a little format thing. Format and take what we learned from above. Take this variable, copy, paste, use our little comma period to F formatting string, do that. And then we don't need to see this anymore. Right. Again, I'm assuming if you're trying to follow along, you're going to pause. You're going to run, run, run. And that looks pretty decent. All right. Cost of borrowing. Well, that is a ridiculous calculation. We also know uh, that this is the flip payment multiplied by that subtract the present value. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a variable called float um, total cost of borrowing. And what is that? That's assigned what this thing is. So we're going to go uh, copy, 
paste. Awesome. Take this variable, copy, and use what we've just learned. That colon, comma, period, 2F. Get rid of this. Make sure my parentheses and all that are lining up, and they are. Remember, these are curly braces. If you're getting confused, run again, go, and, and oh, what did we miss? I missed putting the F. I missed putting the F. So I'm going to go ahead and put the F in there, and we're going to go run, run, and go. There's my total cost of borrowing. Okay, this is awesome. It's becoming much more of a program now. I'm pretty excited about that. Now, um, let's uh, uh, go in here. And now uh, we got our, uh, I think our processing is pretty solid, our output certainly solid. Let's get back up and look at the input. So what we want here is you want the uh, user to be able to type in um, what the actual amount is. So this would be an input again with a prompt, what uh, is your present, present, present value, okay? And we go question mark. And of course I like these, you don't have to do these, but I like these little prompty things. And remember that's gonna return a string, right? Input takes in a prompt. It's a function, I should say, that takes in a prompt and it returns a string. We need to convert that back to a float. We have a whole chapter coming up on this now. So let's run that run, run, what's the present value? I'm gonna put in exactly the same amount that I put in before and it spits out the same number. This time I'm not gonna close out the shell because I'm going to keep testing this. All right, what is the rates per period? Well, here's something we kind of got to do here. We probably need to have a flip rate and ask what is that rate? And then the rate per period would be the rate divided by the period. So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to anticipate that this is already going to be a float. I'm going to anticipate it's going to be an input. What is your interest rate? And honestly, most people are going to tell you, they're not going to, they're not going to tell you your interest rate is zero point whatever. They're going to say it's 5% every month or every period, right? So I think it's fair for me to say, what is your interest rate? And, uh, and actually what I am gonna say here, I'm gonna give a little bit of help. I'm gonna say that uh, 5% uh, um, uh, would be entered as five. Let's do all of our calculations for them so they don't have to sit there and try and figure this out. So that, that, that first parentheses close the uh, input, the second, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, second one is closing the flow. All right, good deal. Now, because of that, by the way, I'm going to have to add a special part of my processing. If I really am going to keep this pure, I'm going to have to add a special part of my processing. I'm going to have to go flit rate is assigned flit rate divided by 100. Okay. Now, let's do the whole um, how many years. It's debatable. I could, in theory, ask him how many um, uh, how many periods. I could just do a straight out how many periods. But most of us aren't going to walk in and say, "I'd like to have a you know a car loan over forty eight periods." Right? Most of us is going to be how many uh, you know how many years, and then how many uh, how many payments per year. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to say uh, um, um, I'm still going to make it a float, but how many years? And you know, by the way, I'm not a financial analyst, so so if you are, feel free to uh, to get me on this. Anyway, it's going to be float input. How many years? This is pretty self-explanatory, so I'm just going to leave it alone. Okay, that's how many years. And so we've got the rate. We've got how many years? These are going to be calculated inside the processing section now. So let's uh, let's let's do this. So so what I need to know is the the number of payments the number of payments is going to be the number of years multiplied by this can be an integer how many payments per year? It's gonna be an integer 
input how many payments per year. Jamie wins because I'm not to totally cool about that, but whatever. So it's going to be uh, if they put in 12 payments per year, that's my number of payments. Okay, so now uh, that's my number of periods. And then we already know that the uh, interest gets divided by those number of periods. So I'm going to go further and divide that by the number of periods. And I can now throw out these variables for now. All right. Well, that was a lot of changing. So let's go ahead and run this module and make sure that we're preserved here. So the present value is 20,000. My interest rate is five. Uh, it's going to be over four years and it's going to be... Um, uh, 12 payments per year. I think that gets me close to what it was before. And it explodes. All right, good deal. So is not defined. Flit rate. Flit rate. Flit rate. Let's go back here, by the way. What was the approximate number? So it's actually happening right here in the multiplication. So that's equal to this. Flit rate per period. Oh, that's because... Oh, look at that. That's because... Let's do that. Okay, so the flit rate per period is the float rate, which is coming in there, divided by 100, which takes 5 to 0 0.05, and, and then divides that further by the number of periods. All right, good deal. Let's run again. Go, and we go 20,000, and I'm going to go 5, and we're going to go over 4 years, 12 payments per year. All right, so what's happening now, friends, is that we're, uh, we're getting an error, and it's an interesting error. Uh, and now is about the time to realize that something horrible has happened here because what's going on is that uh, the payment I'm saying is 427, whereas up here it was 460. So I can no longer trust my little algorithm here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to run it and uh, and uh, and see roughly where my problem is rather than have you sit for the next 45 minutes and try and figure this out. So off we go. Let me just uh, pause the video and uh, and then I'll come back with hopefully a fixed program. This is the thrill, by the way, of programming. And this is why, again, you want to do it very slowly because at this moment in time, I've got a problem. And I actually know roughly where the problem is because it's going to be with the lines that I that I alter. Also, by the way, this could be the right answer, although we know it's not because we verified that um, um, externally. All right, enough of that. Here we go. All right, so I figured out what the problem was, but this is a great moment to talk about debugging. So what I did is I flew off to Python Tutor here, and this time it's working for me, which is awesome. I visualized the execution. I then went ahead and typed in my values, the ones I'm testing with, which is five, uh, how many years, it's gonna be for four years, it's going to be for um, 12 payments per year. That's our new thing. I then kind of go to the end. I see, okay, that's the same error that I actually saw when I was uh, running it. And I think right there, yeah, it's the same error. So then what I was able to do is go back up and watch this thing build while comparing it to what I'm expecting. This is, again, why you desk, desk check, right? And so... Um, uh, at this moment in time, actually, sorry, let's go back up. So right now, these are all my inputs in, all right? And then as you start moving forward, the total number of periods is how many years multiplied by payments per year. And that's 48, and that's kind of definitely what I'm expecting. That's the number of payments. Then I go with the, flow, the, the rate. Um, I did actually break this up a little bit. I think in my, uh, in my program, I probably had all that happening at the same time. But uh, just by now... You know, when you get knocked off centered, I, I break it up. So the flat rate is assigned flat rate divided by 100. So watch this guy as I move forward. It's 0 0.05. Awesome. Great. Flat rate per period is the flat rate divided by number of periods. Now, that is where I started to get wrong. Because what I uh, when I was working that out, it should have been, um, uh, this is it, right? Uh, I think, right? The flat rate. Right there is 5% divided by 12 is that. And then um, so roughly like here, I'm getting 0 0.001, whereas I'm really expecting to get 0 0.0042 perhaps. So I went, huh, I wonder why that is. But then I realized that, um, that this is 
12 payments per year, not the total number of payments. I went, ah, see, that's the number of periods. It really should have been how many payments per year. So then I went back into here. I did a quick little test. Here's my uh, worry, number of payments per year. I go copy. I go down to my code. I go paste. So instead of it dividing it by the total number of payments in the loan, it's dividing it by the payments per year. I then run again and I go put in my, my defaults here and let's go five. And let's go uh, 12, no, how many years is four and how many payments per year is 12. And I go, go, now I'm just gonna run it right to the end, that 2108. Let's check it again with my desk check, 2108. <sighs> anyway, whatever, it's close enough for government work. So then I say, that sounds good. Let's go back now and look at my actual code. And so instead of this being the number of payments, I'm gonna divide this thing by the number of payments per year. I'm going to run it and let's see if we get the same numbers here. And of course now I'm running out of real estate. So let's go 20,005 uh, and it's over four years at 12 payments. And now we got 2108, 2108. So this part of the code is actually working. Whew. All right, that was good. And now um, I'm satisfied with this because I'm doing all of my calculations here in the processing section. I'm not satisfied with the amount of documentation, by the way. I'd want to probably document this. The only other thing I'd want to do now is I don't like variables just spontaneously popping up, right? So if you're using a variable, like uh, I think, um, so present value is, but this guy here, number of periods doesn't exist. So remember, if you want to kind of get good at programming, you, you kind of, want to make sure that you have a declaration section. So there's that, the rate per period. I'm going to put that up there too. Obviously the program works without it, but why not do that anyway? Uh, this flip payment is also, actually that's our target. That's actually what we're trying to get. So let's just do that and assume that the payment is in fact zero. This X is bothering, actually this is bothering me too, because this isn't really the payment. That really, I should indicate that's kind of a throwaway variable, but you know what? Um, I would either want to document that a little bit better or, or, or make it like a throwaway variable. So, so I'm thinking that uh, uh, I'm going to actually make this X, I'm going to make this Y, and I'm going to make that X. I'm gonna make that Y, there it is, all right. By the way, that was a pretty significant change, so I'm probably gonna run it again. But uh, before I do, let's get total cost, which is also gonna be initialized to zero. And let's get the total cost of borrowing, which is also gonna be initialized to zero. By the way, it looks like I got some faster than lights in there. <laughs> Right, so floating versus faster than light. But all right, you know what? That's fine. Let's run it anyway. Uh, let's see what's happening. Let's make sure twenty thousand. It's five, uh, and then four years at twelve payments, and it worked. Awesome. Okay, so this is actually a pretty good program. I'd want to add a section at the top, basically saying, you know, what is this? So you know, uh, sometimes it's not a bad thing. Basically saying, you know, calculates. Uh, payment um, of a loan, you know, some other kind of documentation. And um, and here's why this is so gosh darn flexible now. Let, let me get rid of the shell and show you now the, the miracle of this. Oh, you know, I, I can't, I can't do this. This is going to be LT and this is going to be LT. And then down here, uh, yeah, you are LT you are LT. Yeah, uh, yeah, this is bad. This is bad. It's going to be all over the place. By the way, a copy and replace, uh, replace would have been a better way to do this. But you can tell I came from an environment before copy and replace. All right, so I think I saved my bacon there. All right, let's go run, run, run. And we're going to do our test case. So it's 20,000, five, four years over 12. And I blew it up because geez louise sitting in here there's got to be uh another lt come on okay what were you you were basically saying the total cost alone is that so 
Uh, total cost of the loan is that, oh my goodness, FLTL. So it is float, nope. Thanks. Again, copy replace would have been the better way to do that. Okay, I think you're good. All right, good deal. Let's run it again. And actually, before we run it, let's throw the shell away because I want to uh, show you guys something there. All right, so let's go run, run, saving it. Present value is 20,000. It's five, four years, 12. Awesome. So now we're back. Everything looks good. Let's, so that's now uh, a loan where I'm basically paying it monthly. Let's, uh, let's do that same run, but imagine that I only am going to pay it yearly. So it's going to be 20,000. It's 5% over four years, one payment per year, right? Interesting when you allow interest to accumulate and let's run it now and say, hey, I want to pay it like uh, 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 twice a month. 20,000, five, four years. I'm going to pay it twice a month, which is 24 payments a year. And that's even a bit lower than the monthly. And then one more time, and let's do it by uh, bi weekly, which is 26. 26, it's once every two weeks. So 20,000, five, four years, 26. And you'll notice that bi-monthly, bi-weekly, there's not much of a, of a change. In fact, you only save over the course of the loan, two bucks. So, all right, there you go. That's, an, uh, uh, that's probably the end of this part of financial math. Financial math isn't going to go away because we're going to do some other stuff with it. But uh, for now, um, um, that's good. What we were able to do with this is we went ahead and uh, this exact, uh, this demonstration actually talked a little bit about the virtualizer, but the other part is that we basically took this formula and we actually made it um, into, into an actual program.